Here we are with Chris Dunn, Senior Director of A&R at Concord Records. So Chris, you're a Senior A&R Director of Concord Records. Yes. Do you want to talk through for those guys out there that don't know, what, what does A&R do in a record label? What do you do? What do I do? Hmm. Um, well, I mean, the, I think the one thing that everybody kind of knows um, that an A&R does is obviously they sign artists and then um, work with them during the course of the album and uh, see projects through and and that's pretty much the basic part. Um, the other side is obviously searching for talent and um, just building that talent you mm -hmm. know, once, you, once you find it, which is pretty rare. Um, a lot of hand-holding, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a pretty um, fast-paced position. You have to uh, think fast on your feet because there's a lot of problem solving because, you know, a lot of times, especially in the creative process or or even the early vision of an artist, you know, you kind of have to help them see that through sometimes. So it can... So it's a bit of a producer's role in a way. Yeah. As well. Yeah, in a way. I mean, some artists really have it together, so mm -hmm. there's not much to discuss, but then there are some that are really kind of finding themselves. And and for me, I mean, I always... I don't want to get in the way of what their vision is because, you know, who am I? So I, I kind of like to see them, you know, get to know them. I mean, the, the more you know an artist, from my standpoint, mm -hmm. the easier it is for you to, to see where they want to go or the places that they might not be thinking that they want to go. So it's just it's just easier to you know to spend time with them and and get to know them as a person as well as the the, the musical side. And it just it makes things a lot better because then there you have to build that trust because um, if they don't trust you because I mean it's like um, you know it's like their baby whatever they're making is is their creation. So you know. They only want to let certain people in, you know? yeah. So it, it takes a minute to earn their trust. And w here at Concord, or um, I know you've been here for quite a while. We we're talking about before, yeah. Coming on fourteen uh, years or so. I think fourteen years. Fourteen years. Yeah. So through that, I'm sure you've you've seen a lot. Did you start off in A&R? No, no. Actually, um, I actually started in a warehouse. Mm -hmm. There we I go. Was, um, I used to work for a radio station before that, so. Obviously, I like careers that don't have a short sh shelf life. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah. so I ended up uh, just coming to Concord, just on a whim, um, to uh, to actually work the um, holiday shift during the warehouse. And uh, my previous ex previous experience was in jazz. Uh, it was a jazz radio station that I was working for. So uh, once people kind of knew my background, then they they were kind enough to involve me more and, and it just kind of progressed progressed from there so did you need did you obviously working now you need good ears mm -hmm. can you can you oh, yeah. spot talent when you hear it yeah uh, you know it's, it's funny because up until I actually because I'd never had a, a dream of, of doing this gig it was never even you know a fantasy or anything because uh, I used to be a musician um, before that and then I actually stopped being a musician and became a radio DJ because i not very good at, you know, selling yourself. You know, as a musician, you have to really get yourself out there and, and, yeah. and be all that. And I just knew I, I could never do that. So uh, I went into radio because that's where most people go when they're shy. So, yeah. so I started doing that. And then, uh, you know, when this opportunity presented itself, I literally am kind of a music geek, you know, and, and it, uh, music has always played like a really huge part of my life. And it always seemed like I had a wealth of just unusable knowledge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then, you know, when you get this kind of gig, you can source. it kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a matter of fact, some of the early projects I worked on are like some of my favorite uh, artists. So I almost felt like I was cheating. Like, you know, this it can't be, you know, it can't be this easy. You know what <laughs> I mean? Uh, one of the, one of the uh, big projects that we got to work on was not jazz related, was a, a Maurice White project from Earth, Wind & Fire, who's you know, one of my favorite singers like of all time, my, my band, one of my favorite bands of all time. So I remember when my um, boss was saying, you know, what do you think? Should we have a meeting with Maurice White? And I was like, sure. He said, you think you could help? I'm like, oh yeah, I know a few or 20 of their albums <laughs> like the back of my hand. Sure, we could do that. So it, it's good ears. Um, passion for the music plays a, a huge role. If you're not passionate about the music, then it's then this gig can be tough because 
Um, obviously, there's some nice perks from it, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of uh, non-creative stuff that you're dealing with, politics, you know, within artists and management and within the label and the artist and then the consumer. It, it, it can get draining, you know. The, the most fun you have is, you know, when you're obviously around the artist and in the studio. So how do you source your, how do you guys at Concord source your, your artist? Well, I think for the most part, um, you know, when you're a, a label or, or even a fairly successful label, you're always, people are always going to search because most people will grab their favorite CDs, look at the back of the label and say, you know, I'll write them and submit my demo. It's yeah. like the oldest trick in the book. Yeah. So, you know, there's a certain amount of, of demos that you get that way and then, you know, word spreads. And do you listen to those ones that people send in? You know, it's funny. I, um, when I first started to do the A&R side, we would get these stacks and, and uh, we were a, a fairly small company, uh, very mom and pop when, when Concord first started. Um, and then we, we grew out and what built us up is um, when we did the Ray Charles album. Yeah. And uh, that's what kind of sent us really big. But before that, we were still very small. So we used to get, you know, pretty decent amount of, of demos, like, you know, oh, I don't know, maybe like 250 or something like that a week. So, you know, it's wow. a lot. So That's a lot of listening. But I felt like it was my duty, like when I first started doing the A&R, that, boy, if I don't go through them and there's something magical in there, you know, that's the easiest gig in the world, right? <laughs> so I would literally take, you know, one day a week, and, and it was painful, but I would go through all the demos that we had. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, in the and was beginning... And was it quick listening? Bang, 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 bang? Oh, yeah, you can tell. Yeah, I mean, there's a... It's funny, I can... Um, in the beginning, you know, everything's brand new, so, you know, you're looking at the disc, and you don't care what it looks like or, or whatever, and you just put it in, and, and it is what it is. But now I can actually... I can actually tell from the envelope before you open it really? what it's going to sound like. And what are the what are the good sounding envelopes sound like? <laughs> to start with, and then we'll go to the bad ones. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> well, actually... They got uh, stamps on them. Yeah, well, it, it, the, the trick is really the writing. Uh -huh. So if the writing is, you know, not the best, then, you know, if someone didn't take the time to send a, a proper package, you know, it's, okay. it's like a place of business. You show up your first day. Yeah, yeah. So you want to type at least. Yeah, well, I mean, whatever's neat. I mean, if my handwriting is not that neat, but if if your handwriting is neat and you send it in, yeah. then that's a good thing. It looks like you've taken some time to to send it as professional. That's really basically what you, you don't want. want fluoro to be. pens with pictures all over it. No, <laughs> or like cutouts of newspaper separate letters and that kind of thing is yeah. kind of scary. So, yeah. what are the bad ones you get for people? Oh, the bad ones are, are horrible to learn from. Um, what not to do? Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> there must be some bad ones. Yeah, there's some pretty bad ones. Um, I, you know, the main ones that kind of look like um, like a fourth grader wrote on them, or uh, you know, we, you get a lot of uh, really cheap blank CDs that you know it's just like They've scribble in on it. You know, yeah. and and the weird here's letter, my phone number. The weird letters that go with it that almost looks like pen polish. <laughs> those are, those are not usually good. Um, uh, we actually, it wasn't that long ago, I think maybe five years ago, someone sent a cassette. Wow! In, and did you have a cassette player? Uh, I did. I had <laughs> one in the closet, and I actually pulled it out because you knew you can tell on a demo right away whether it, every A and R person, I'll tell you, every A and R person has a collection of the best of the worst demo. <laughs> and when you see a cassette in the, in, the, in the 2000s, you know that's going to be classic. <laughs> so, I mean, I definitely I definitely made an effort to... Uh, <laughs> and you obviously signed them. Yes, to, to our demo collection, <laughs> but haven't released it yet. We'll wait until they die. And more. <laughs> so, with, so I guess the old-fashioned way, people sending in demos, and obviously you're listening to the first 10 seconds or 5 seconds, and you can just tell. If it's yeah, what you're I mean, after or not. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it depends, you know, if you're an artist and you say right up front you're a songwriter, then then I'll probably spend a little more time with at least one tune, see mm -hmm. if there's something there. Um, if you just say you're an artist and you don't really say you write, then it, it, 
it's pretty fast. I mean, you kind of know, mm -hmm. you know, uh, especially after doing it for a while, then then you it's an instinct. It, it, it kind of becomes a science a little mm -hmm. bit. It's hard to explain, but it just over the course of time, you, you just get so used to you just you just know how it's going to play out. Mm -hmm. Further on from getting it sent to you, do you mm -hmm. go through MySpace and online? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, are you just trawling through? Is it through recommendations or? Well, advice? I mean, I mean, the easiest way is you, you know you look at the top. You know, it'll say on MySpace the top twenty most listened to, and so it's a, and it'll say major, which obviously those are all signs. So you look at the indies, and you just kind of mm -hmm. go through and see who has the most hits and that kind of a thing, and and you know they have it pretty much all laid out by genre. So if whatever you're looking for, you just click on it and see. And would so, you do that weekly? Do you go through? Um, I haven't done it that much lately, mm -hmm. just because. Um, we're fortunate enough at the stage we are that you know we we get approached a lot, so yeah. that, you know th the search isn't as as heavy as it can be. You know the the searching part of it can can sometimes go in cycles. Like you know there are moments in a label where you know I mean you're always looking for talent, but there are moments where you know the timing might not be right for a new artist. Uh, I mean you look at the the market now musically, mm -hmm. it's just not the best time to, to break a new artist unless, you know, it's a home run, mm -hmm. you know, which... Unless it's Asha. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> so, so you know, you have your mo moments where you're physically out there searching across the United States, but most of the time, you know, you're just local. It's just kind of like word of mouth. M most of our audience are indie artists starting out mm -hmm. who probably um, have got their own label or looking to get on a label. Right. What are s some tips and advice you can give them um, to hopefully come on board with someone you know, like Concord or one of the other labels? Well, I mean, I, I think the the biggest thing that you could do is, number one, have a vision, you know, for your career. I mean, deeper than I want to make a record, or I want to be a star. Like, you know, what's your vision? What kind of artist do you want to be? Um, are you a performance-based artist? Um, you know, where do you see yourself like 10, 15 years down the road? You know, how many records do you want to make? you know, that kind of a thing. Um, the other part of it is, <clears throat> is along with having that vision, especially nowadays, and it, it was done before. I mean, no one's doing anything now that wasn't done before. So it's important for you to, to build a following within your own community. That's the easiest thing to do, you know. If so start local. Start local. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you start local, build it out, you know, because, you know, the whole thing about crossing over is you know you have to you have to maximize that one area first and then you know because of the popularity you spill over mm -hmm. so you know it's pretty easy it's like well you know how many can you book if you booked a show in your hometown how many people would go and if, and if it, you know the guy says 90 then it's like okay well there's work to do so it seems to be a big thing we've got through a lot of these <coughs> interviews is mm -hmm. to tour touring is oh, the yeah. key yeah, these days, even more so than probably the past, just simply because, you know, you can't depend on retail. Mm. You know, there's just not not that much retail these days. You know, it's a limited space. I mean, depend upon what genre, but, I mean, unless you're going to be like Usher or Lady Gaga, you know, there's there's only so much space in the Targets and the Walmart. So, uh, and it's getting that, Yeah, it's getting that hype as well. Yeah, and mm. your best retail... Is your live shows because mm. you know if you put on a great show, who's not going to want to walk away with you know mm. that that feeling? You know, mm. it's like oh, that was a great show. You know, do you have a CD? It's the first thing people say. Mm. Do you have a CD? And you're supposed to go yes, and it's twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess as you're saying, when you're going through MySpace, you want to see that there's a hype behind this band. Well, you want to see a big following, yeah. which is really what you're going to get through touring and you yeah, know, those elements. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd say. Especially for us, um, because we're not, you know, super big majors. You know, we're 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 still, you know, we're one of the biggest indies mm -hmm. out there. But we have major muscle with distribution and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're kind of the. the I've, seen muscle, bit, I've seen your muscle. I've seen your muscle. You got it. Yeah. Well, let's not talk about that. <laughs> no, no. But um, so um, so, I mean, there has to there has to be a little bit of a base for us to build up because it's just too difficult these these. To, to, to build from nothing, you know. I mean, there's always going to be that exception to the rule, mm -hmm. and someone may very well be that, but that person 
he or she has to be just like super together and 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 you can tell i mean it's uh it's interesting when you come across an artist who's thought about it like really thought about it and and even if they don't have like a detailed plan they they do have a general idea of what they want to do and a lot of people think you know creatively that first it's going to happen overnight which never does but second that you know, other than performing and going in the studio, that you're just kind of hanging out, writing songs, and mm. you know, eating caviar with with the best of them. But mm. I mean, there's, I mean, it, it's it is a job. Yeah. You know, it, it's work. You know, mm. and initially, you know, that artist has got to be one of the soldiers. You know, you can't you can't be colonel status and kick back and call shots. You have to mm. be out there. Clubs, hi, my name is. You know, you know, check out this band. You know, if you like, like if you go to a a certain club that a band's playing that's similar to yours as an artist, you know, you gotta you have to go to that club and say, you know, if you like this band, hey, you know, give us a shot, you know, check this out. You know, it it's really all about the hustle. And when an artist comes on board, you mentioned before that you sort of go through the whole process. Mm -hmm. What's the the pro what's that process that you go through? So you, if you see a band on MySpace that you like, mm -hmm. do you you approach them? Yeah. And then, what's the steps? You they I mean, come in here. I mean, today, yeah, it's so crazy. I mean, you could just email the MySpace and if they're and if they're I mean it's a good way to see if they're on top of it if you email them and you get a fairly quick response back mm -hmm. you know they're, they're paying attention it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a quick way to find out or if a manager hits you up or that kind of a thing I mean once that once that kind of jump starts particularly because most of the time on MySpace you know you're going to hear like a demo version or sort of a inadequate live version that's you know obviously they're not can't afford to spend a lot of money on making sure the sound quality is great. So you just kind of mm -hmm. get a, a sketch idea of what what it is. And mm -hmm. If it's appealing, you you know you, you call a meeting and uh, and meet in person. And usually from there, if that goes fairly well, you uh, set up a live show and see how they perform live. Because in the end, that's really you know what it's what it's going to be about. Yeah. yeah. And once you see them live, <clears throat> you just figure out, you know, what steps to take. If, if, if they feel like they're ready, is there a little bit of a learning curve that has to happen, which most of the time there is. Um, and, I mean, you just kind of work it out from there. It, it all, once you get in that stage, there's all, there's all different type of situations. Some, some people are more ready. Some people have actually made a record that's done. Um that is actually, you know, can be usable. I mean, oftentimes you might add a little something here and there. Um, but most of the time it is, you know, I have a few songs, I'm thinking about making a record, mm. you know. I, I made a record at home, but, you know, it doesn't sound the best. And, and so I just usually kind of consider those kind of like demos and just build off it from there. Mm -hmm. And do you, so then you take them through to the studio process as well? So you, do you yeah. follow them through? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, here particularly, we we're pretty hands on, not in the way of interfering with the music so much, but just being a part of that process. And and it it really is seeing their vision through, mm -hmm. you know, because it benefits all of us. You know, we we all wanted to win, so mm -hmm. so it's an important part to make sure that that every part of the process, especially in the studio, is going well. You know, and 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 the main part more than anything for me is to make sure the artist is comfortable and, and confident you know mm -hmm. you don't you don't want um, that artist to be in a situation where they you know there's already going to be you know bugs you know they're, they're going to be a little nervous, nervous yeah, yeah. but you know if you if you do your job right you know if you feel confident in them they'll feel that and, and it does help the process and are most um, signings per album like in terms of one album at a time no, it's usually a numerous. Mm, well, you know, it's usually option based. I mean, you know, it's kind of like the equivalent of the NBA. You don't want to, you don't want to groom groom an artist to to be a superstar and, and just have one option because, you know, they'll they'll go to the best suitor after. You know, yeah, the, yeah. the money will now that, you know, the company's put all this energy and, and effort along with the artist's hard work. It's like, well, you know, it was a great success and. Uh, See ya. <laughs> you know, we gotta, I'm gone. Yeah, we got a. They bought us an island in Bermuda, so we're gonna go with this label now. So it's like, you know. Are you involved with all of their publicity as well in their promotion? 
Well, certainly, I mean, there's an overall vision, mm-hmm. um, and that is and that is discussion. But you know, at a label, you know, everybody's great at what they do. Mm-hmm. So you kind of you take it to the next step, and, mm-hmm. and once the creative process done, the and the overall vision has been laid out to the company. Then you allow you know marketing and and and, and publicity areas. and sales to yeah. to to take it to the next level. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean you're you're still involved from an A and R standpoint, but mm-hmm. you know you're more kind of a watch and see, and and you're also there just in case something's not quite right. Mm-hmm. And, and you know you 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 tend to be um, because you're in in that early process. You know you do tend to get called on a lot uh, from you know the company and the artist when, when you're in the middle not man. quite sure yet. Mm-hmm. You know because the artist obviously build a comfort zone, but you know it it can get interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and um, a lot of these indie artists that you're dealing with, mm-hmm. are they? Do they? A lot of them have managers. Are you dealing yeah. with? Yeah, yeah. I mean it. It you know it. It's rare that an artist will be without a manager. I mm-hmm. mean some of the. Some of the veterans obviously can can get away with that if they've been doing it their whole life and and you know they're at the point of their career where it's you know okay I'm just doing gigs I'm doing albums you know I'm on TV I, I got to figure it out but most yeah. people yeah you, you you have to have management you're obviously mm-hmm. dealing with a manager on a business sense right. and the artist probably isn't aware of that is there any advice you can give them to look out for when when signing a manager or well management's tough I mean actually you know. Uh, uh, the first thing an artist will say when you meet them is, you know, hey, do you know any managers? And even, meet, even if they've got a manager, no. Well, you know, <laughs> but sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you know, management is you're essentially it's like you're a matchmaker if you get involved in that. So it's like you know, if the relationship works out, you know, you're a genius. But yeah. if it doesn't work out, then hey, who was the one who set me up with that manager? <laughs> then it comes back to you. Then you know, ooh, that could be bad. So we. Generally, I think try to stay away from from matching up. You know, mm-hmm. you, you certainly give advice and things to look to look at. And you've you've mentioned that the music industry has changed a lot, as mm-hmm. I'm sure you're well aware of. Oh, yeah. So, for artists to get noticed um, out there, do you have any advice that you can give them to really try and cut through in? Well, I mean, just like. MySpace when it first hit, or you go on there. I mean, YouTube is just just as big. You know, viral these days is is just big in general. Mm-hmm. You know, if if for whatever it is over the years, I mean, when you see someone on TV, it, it, it's it's real. And and even if it's YouTube, it's still for whatever reason it's it's real. real. You yeah, know? yeah. And it's it is really real. If you know, a million people could watch cute kittens. I mean, <laughs> I don't, you know, so. You know, if you're an artist, just just get out there. You know, you really have to uh, be seen and heard, and on a on a on a wide scale. You know, start start from from your home base, and then and then build build from there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it takes a long time, but you know that's the that's the beauty of the internet is, you know, if you actually can attract people to that site, you can have people all over the world watching you. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's important. So, what do you think artists can learn from? I guess the big artists that you've got here at Concord, like Ray Charles and all the others, mm. what do you think makes, apart from their music, makes them stand out to be where they are? Well, I mean, you know, from the the Paul McCartney's of the world and the, the James Taylors, and I mean, those cats have been doing it forever, and mm. you know, they just they just have it down. They know what they're doing. I mean, I think for the for the young, it's it's you know, just you gotta put your head down. It's just a lot of work to do. You gotta pay your dues. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of artists don't realize that there's dues to pay. There was dues f- for us to pay uh, from an A and R standpoint. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's just I mean, it's just a lot of hard work. Um, I just I just can't stress it enough. It is work, people. It is it is really work, and those artists that. When you really want to make it, yeah, those artists that you see sitting on yachts, or when you see all that good stuff, just know that there was just a ton of work that went before that. So, 
or it's just a video. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie. Yeah. One it's of not the, real. One of those. Yeah. 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 yeah it's apple cider, not champagne. <laughs> <laughs> any any last minute tips you think you can give um, these artists trying to crack it? I mean, you know, again, I mean, it, it is an overall plan. Um, really see things through. It's it can't be. You know, we can tell if you're. It's just if it's just a pipe dream or you're serious about it, we can mm -hmm. tell right away. Um, be honest. I mean, if you don't know something, say it. If you need help with something, get it. No one does it alone. Um, but you just got to keep grinding. You know, get management when when the time is right. Um, but there's so much to do before you even think about management. You know, you have to make sure your band is fine or or whatever kind of music you're doing, find a good producer, or if you're the producer, you know, are you are you a good producer? You know, it's tough. It's tough to produce yourself, because, you know, you got, if you're not really bouncing ideas off, it's a tough thing in the beginning, because you're thinking about so many million things. Mm. That's why it's hard to be an artist and a manager. Mm. You know, it's, it's just too much to take on. Mm. And I guess at the beginning, um, for all of these guys, it really is like climbing Everest. Yeah. And I guess you just got to try and find the right track up there. Yeah, I mean, get there. I mean, along that, you just you have to. If you really want to crack it big, you it's have to crack it. But I think it's funny that you mentioned that because really, out of that reminds me is is to be yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, don't try to be someone else because it's it's the individual that makes it or breaks it. You know, there's if if there's a certain individual that has success then there'll be other people who try to clone that mm -hmm. and, and, and have a certain amount of success to build off that. But if you look at all the true greats in the music business, you'll see that they're their own individual person. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really the key. And, uh, and don't be discouraged because it takes a long time. And I don't mean a long time, like three months. I mean, like, you know, it could take years. It could take decades for some. But, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're, if this is what you really want to be, then it doesn't matter, you know, unless you're 80, and then probably it'd be too late at night. <laughs> but, you know, if you're younger than that, just just stick to it. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Appreciate it. No, you're I'm sure welcome. there's a lot of good advice there for guys wanting to, to crack it. I hope so. And give them some tips to get out of their home studio and get their music out there. Get out there. Yeah, thanks.